Intelligence analysts need a workstation environment that supports their workflows and complex intelligence requirements. Today, we are going to discuss how Esri ArcGIS platform provides intelligence community workstation applications and tools that leverage enterprise geospatial services and community imagery formats in a collaborative production environment. With specialized configuration, the Esri user experience can be streamlined for essential intelligence workflows and provide a powerful analytic capability. My name is Wendy Creighton, and I'm an intelligence specialist here at Esri. I have 20 years experience working with defense and intelligence organizations focusing on security and intelligence operations. Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Wendy. My name is Matt Woodleaf, and I'm a solution engineer with Esri. I have a focus on the intelligence community in general, and also work directly with the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I have over eight years of experience working in the intel community, and I look forward to presenting, presenting this webinar with you. Thanks, Matt. The global challenges that we face today are more complex than ever before. A vast number of issues may not lie completely within a single nation state, and they don't necessarily fit neatly into traditional military or diplomatic roles. To respond, our systems and workflows need to be dynamic, agile, and easy to use. There is also an explosion of new sources of information from drones, consumer devices, social media, and real-time reporting sensors. The volume of data and sources is growing exponentially, and from it, critical decisions need to be made quickly to ensure mission success. All of this leads to increased demand for applications and tools that integrate data from multiple sources, streamline intelligence workflows, and enable modern intelligence production and sharing. There is a growing demand for actionable intelligence in support of multiple missions. Information is needed that is timely, and in many cases, real time, and provides relevant spatial context. Information also needs to be discoverable, accessible, and easy to use. Geospatial technology provides a foundational framework where we can organize and integrate our data. We can visualize and analyze the relationships and patterns. We can conduct predictive and forensic analysis, as well as accomplish design and planning activities. Ultimately, we can make informed decisions based on the information and intelligence products created, and then take appropriate action. Location information can provide additional context when applied to existing information. Used in conjunction with temporal and activity data, location data allows us to examine relationships and patterns of behavior in ways we may not have been able to do through single discipline analysis. ArcGIS is a platform for intelligence. It is designed to ingest and display data from multiple types of sensors to include national, theater, and tactical level sensors and sources. It leverages various integrated tools to reveal patterns and relationships within and across multiple intelligence disciplines and can be used to apply existing workflows and tradecraft to create intelligence products. ArcGIS truly integrates people, technology, and processes to support multiple missions. ArcGIS also simplifies working with all types of data. It allows analysts to work with imagery, tabular, and vector data within both 2D and 3D environments in real time, all within the same workstation environment. Intelligence analysts face a number of challenges. Analysts work on multiple systems with different tools configured to work with different types of data and formats. It is difficult to share much of this data between systems, tools, or products. Additionally, the use of geospatial data is growing by non-GIS experts. 
other analysts, operators, and decision makers are beginning to rely on and incorporate geospatial information for improved reporting and decision making. Analysts continue to have to sort through multiple databases and file shares, searching for the most up-to-date authoritative data. All of the above hinder collaboration and sharing of information. The Intelligence Workstation with ArcGIS is a combination of applications and tools leveraging the ArcGIS platform. It is scalable to your organization, mission, and intelligence requirements, leverages enterprise data and services, is built on the foundation of ArcGIS Pro as the modern desktop application. With specialized intelligence configuration for ArcGIS Pro, it's built for analysts. Is enhanced by defense solutions, apps, and tools, and integrates imagery tools and geospatial capabilities. To take a deeper look at ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to turn it over to Matt. Thank you very much, Wendy. Let's talk about ArcGIS Pro and how it is incorporated into the ArcGIS platform and the Intelligence Workstation. But before we dive into it really deeply, let's talk about first what ArcGIS Pro actually is. So ArcGIS Pro sits as our combination of applications on our desktop. It can be work, it can works with ArcMap uh, in conjunction or a replacement to ArcMap. Uh, no matter what version of ArcMap you have, you can employ ArcGIS Pro in its current form, which is 2.1. You'll see that our, both ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro are designed to work together uh, to, to access the web, access different devices, and pull and push data to the portal. But let's talk about, a little bit about what the future holds. So you see here that ArcMap is not part of the future. That doesn't mean that ArcMap is going away by any means. We plan to support ArcMap for a long time. But ArcGIS Pro represents the modern desktop GIS. It is more tightly integrated with the concept of WebGIS and better serves uh, ArcGIS apps. Also, it takes into account um, modern computer abilities such as 64-bit processing as, and multi-threaded capabilities. Before we go any further, let's talk about what ArcGIS Pro is. ArcGIS Pro represents a fusion of applications. It's taking the best of ArcMap and the best of Arc Catalog, combining that with the best of Arc Globe and Arc Scene, and giving it a pinch of City Engine. As a result, ArcGIS Pro serves as an all-in-one application. We developed Pro to take advantage of multi-monitor workstations, which is the modern way to do business. Also, it scales up to the video walls and can react to touch-enabled screens. What makes ArcGIS Pro so modern? Well, to start, it's 64-bit, while ArcMap is 32-bit, and also it can be multi-threaded, which is a more effective way of using memory and allows concurrent processing on a single core. The bottom line is no more waiting for ArcMap to finish um, the process. You can do other things while a GPP tool is running. Also, we've simplified the user, the user interface by going to a ribbon interface similar to Microsoft Audit products, Office products, we were able to declutter the screen. Contextual tabs appear when they are relevant and disappear when they are not. The tabs, the views, and the panes re replace the toolbars. So now everyone has a common operating interface and it's easier to find what you're looking for. Also, ArcGIS Pro has been tightly integrated with ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise. ArcMap was created before either of these two products. And while ArcMap does integrate with these two, it is much more difficult to accomplish sharing and collaboration. Also, in ArcGIS Pro, we're moving away from the MXD and moving into something called a project. A project can contain multiple maps and multiple layouts in a single area. So all of your, if you want to produce multiple maps or multiple layouts for a single project, you're able to do that and view them all in ArcGIS Pro. And not only are you able to view them not only in 2D, but you can do 3D scenes as well. Also, we simplified the search and the queries. So no more digging into the properties or 
taking having to dig through a bunch of toolbars to find what you want. There are search bars all, 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 all over the place, and query builders on the contextual data and labeling tabs allow you to, to simply search your data. Now, ArcGIS Pro will come with some growing pains, and part of that is we've changed the language a little bit. So let's get a level set of the language of ArcGIS Pro. This slide shows a lot of the terminology equivalents, and also there's an ArcGIS Pro terminology guide available on the web. So the main um, features here is that we're moving away from data view and data frames and calling those map views and map frames. Also, the active data frame is now going to be called the active view, and your global and local scenes are simply called scenes. Another question we get a lot is, what happened to data-driven pages? Well, it's still there. Uh, it's just called map series now. And you can see from the other, these other um, parts of the table that there are different terms uh, for different things in ArcGIS Pro. And as mentioned before, the ArcGIS Pro terminology guide is available online. So that's enough about me talking about ArcGIS Pro. Let's see ArcGIS Pro. So what we have here is an ArcGIS Pro project. And let's talk about first about this, what this ribbon interface is. So instead of having toolbars over the place, we've simplified the experience and now have these, this ribbon interface. So inside the ribbon interface, we have these things called tabs. As you click on a tab, it exposes tools to you that are relevant to this tab, such as inserting uh, new maps or uh, connecting to an ArcGIS server. Also, you have the analysis tab where you would find your tools. The view tab, which changes how the, the panes and the windows look and also allows you to convert between 2D and 3D. Your edit tab, which contains all your tools for editing. The imagery tab that contains the imagery tools. And the sharing tab, which allows you to, gives you various options to share stuff in ArcGIS Pro. I also want to highlight the ability of these context tabs. So as I selected a vector layer here in my contents, a feature layer context tab appeared. From here, I can change the appearance of the layer. Without having to go right click and choose properties, now I can just take this uh, appearance tab and go into symbology and change the symbology as I'd like. That's similar to labeling. So you just have to dig in there and change your labels and hit apply and hope that they look, look nice. Well, on ArcGIS Pro, you can do labeling on the fly. Also, the data um, properties has, has been exposed here. So you can open the attribute table, uh, you can add fields and subtypes and domains without having to stop editing. Also, create relationships is much easier too with this heads up display. Also, you can export your features from this data layer. One thing I wanna highlight while we're here is the concept of the pane. So this is the geoprocessing pane, uh, for just for this example. And it works a lot like the catalog window did in, in ArcMap, where you have a separate pane that you can access your tools. I also want to highlight the idea of a con the concept of a gallery here. So these are the most commonly used uh, ArcGIS tools, and they've been put into this gallery. And this gallery can be customized for your, uh, your own workflows. So we're going to now take a little dive into what exactly is the ArcGIS Pro project. So what is in an ArcGIS Pro project? Well, it's a collection of related geographic data sets, the maps, layouts, tools, settings, and resources saved in a single APRX file. So what that means is you don't have to have your stuff scattered all over the place. Inside a project is a tool, specific toolbox to that project or you can also import toolboxes, a specific file geodatabase to that project, all the styles, and all the maps and data sets that are used for that project. Think of it as a melding of an MXD and Art Catalog. All the functions of Art Catalog are also in the project, and you can do the mapping and the layouts as you would in an MXD. Not only that, there are several templates that come along with it you can, that are pre-configured to what you plan on doing with your project. And also, I want to highlight the favorites tab in this catalog window. By creating favorites, you're able to access all your files or folders through any ArcGIS Pro project that you choose. So whether or not you have a folder that has a collection of STEs that you'd like to connect to, or perhaps you have one repository for all of your imagery, you can set that up as a favorites and access it through every single project. 
Now, talking a little bit about editing. So this is a big change. Editing is always enabled. So what does that really mean practically? Well, you just select your feature and select your tool from the gallery and edit away. You can also um, use drop down so you don't have to undo everything you just did. The big deal with that is now you don't have to stop editing and start editing again just to add and calculate fields. Editing is always ready to go and ArcGIS Pro remains responsive when you're editing fields or doing field calculations. Not only can you edit vectors, you can also edit annotation and you can set up feature templates. And now we also have version editing available in ArcGIS Pro. We've also taken the chance are uh, taking the opportunity to enhance the query builder. So before you used to have to type in all this pseudo SQL and hope that you typed everything in, in properly uh, and got a result. Well, now you can use this graphical user interface with built-in dropdowns to select the um, select the fields and select the um, compare uh, the operators that you'd like. And it's all interactive. Let's talk a little bit about the analysis tools specifically. So they are accessed through the analysis tab. And by clicking on tools, you open the geoprocessing pane. Inside the geoprocessing pane, you'll find three things. You'll find the list of all the toolboxes. You'll find your favorite toolboxes and also any toolboxes that are available on your portal. Also from there, you can search for the tools that you like. And the searching is interactive. So as you're typing, ArcGIS Pro is limiting the options. Also on this analysis tab is where you can import tasks. So you can do repeatable uh, tasks and share those out as well. Speaking of sharing, let's talk about all the things you can share inside ArcGIS Pro. So most of these you could share with ArcMap, but it's very difficult to do. Inside ArcGIS Pro, all you do is open the share tab and you can share a very variety of web maps or 3D web scenes, map and layer packages like you could in ArcMap. But what you can also do is share the ArcGIS Pro project package. And what that allows you to do is package everything that has to do with your pro project. So that includes all the tools that you worked with, all your geoprocessing history, the file geo database, and all your maps and your layout files as well, and tests and symbology. So what you have in the ArcGIS Pro project package is a preservation of your tradecraft that can be shared in, among many users on your portal. One of the other enhancements of ArcGIS Pro is the image analyst extension. So what this allows you to do is have dynamic remote sensing tools and workflows. So you can uh, daisy chain your raster analytics together in, a, in models. Uh, you can do image classification, such as extracting land cover from imagery. You can also uh, enter the image coordinate space, which allows you to view the image as it was captured by the sensor. But this is more, uh, more powerful if I should give a demonstration. So let's get into that. So we're back to our ArcGIS Pro project. Hide that. And we'll zoom into this AOI. The first thing I want you to notice is the great cartography and the representations done by ArcGIS Pro. It's leveraging the power of my graphics card to have beautiful cartography. ArcGIS Pro also accepts many different image formats. Here is our latest native image over this military base. And what's more is that ArcGIS Pro can leverage the portal. So now I don't have to have a whole bunch of imagery uh, saved on my machine. I can simply do a search on my portal and look for active images. And here I've seen I can find four uh, digital globe imagery plus analytic services that are available on my portal. And with these services, I get a full complement of temporal imagery, which allows me to conduct not only visual analysis, but temporal analysis as well. And to add them to the map, all I simply do is select them and add them to the current map. Turning them on, ArcGIS Pro recognizes that they have been time enabled. So what I can do is I can either play it like a video or I can simply click through on my own from one image to the next, to the next image. Or instead of doing it that way and finding images over the area, I can simply slide the time slider to the end and get the most current image. 
Zooming into the front of this military base, let's start to do some analysis. We'll turn off the AOI, and we'll zoom into this, what looks to be a wall here. And zooming in further, we see what appears to be a gap. Well, that's pretty abnormal for a secure facility. So if I only had 2D ArcMap, I would have to switch into ArcGlobe or ArcScene. Well, with ArcGIS Pro, I don't have to do that. Within the exact same project, I have a 3D scene using a Vricon 3D mesh. So zooming into the same area, spinning it around to give us a view up the valley, into that same gap in the wall, I can see they're actually using the terrain as part of their defenses. This is not a gap, it's simply just a change in terrain. Also, we have the fly through available. So I can pan and zoom in 3D. Leveraging the power of ArcGIS Pro, I have many uh, imagery exploitation tools available to me as well. So let's take a look at what I mean when I say image coordinate space. So here we have a typical Nader image. It's shot overhead, uh, it's a little distorted, and it's hard to see what's going on. At the click of a button, I can tell ArcGIS Pro to read the camera model. What that gets me is, is several pieces of information. It gives me the obliquity, it gives me the time of day that it was captured, and so ArcGIS Pro can understand how the image was exactly captured by the sensor. Let's see that one more time. So in this image, what we see here is not much, to be honest. We have a bunch of cloud cover, and it's hard to tell what's going on. As I click in there, I can clearly see that this is a valley. Let's, start, let's continue our analysis over that area. So going into this, this complex here, uh, we have cloud cover in the way. Well, thanks to my digital globe services, I have a full complement of temporal imagery. I can just simply pick a new one and set the focus image and start to understand the area. So image coordinate space allows you to gather more information about the buildings and entrances. So in, for the normal top-down way, I could not see into this into this tunnel. But with the obliquity angle, I, I am able to. So what does this really what does this really all mean? Well, none of it's too practical until you combine all the powers together. So let me set this up here and I'll show you what I mean. What I can do is I can take a regular ortho image. I can compare it with, it with the same area in image coordinate space, and also have the same location available in 3D. What that allows me to do is collect the features where they're most aptly to be collected, and where it's more suitable for me to collect it. So I can go to this ortho image, and I can see the outline of this fence. So I'll simply click the fence here. You can use the freehand drawing tool, which is a available, a new, newly available tool. So with the click of a button and some dragging, I'm able to collect this entire fence. And you can see it appear in image coordinate space as well as down here in 3D. Now. It's easy to collect buildings and gain their attribution from image corner space since I'm able to see see the facades. So to collect the building, simply select the building, use a rectangular collection, and there I collected the building uh, in image corner space. And you see that it also appears here in 3D. Now these anti-artillery aircraft sites are easier to collect in 3D because I can clearly see their platforms. Collected two anti-aircraft artillery sites here. And what we have here is some intelligence gathering collected in the view that's easiest. Another thing that we can also do in ArcGIS Pro is do interactive 3D analysis. So zooming out, let's start doing some terrain analysis. So in 3D, we can start to understand this facility a little bit further. So 
Leveraging the power of raster analytics right inside ArcGIS Pro, I was able to run a slope calculation and try to understand why there's gaps in these fences. They have been integrated into the terrain of the facility. You can see that these green areas are flat and they're fenced, and the red areas are extreme slopes. Let's take another look. Let's take another look uh, at another function of ArcGIS Pro that's pretty cool. So ArcGIS Pro leverages the power of your graphics processing unit to do 3D analytics on the fly. And it also allows you to select a layer and hit apply here. Now we have interactive view sheds. Select all of them. And as I'm panning these view sheds, it's reading the 3D scene. Not only does it do that, but it can also interact with 3D features. So we'll zoom in here a little further. You can see that ArcGIS Pro, on the fly, is understanding the 3D terrain as well as the 3D features. So let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about specific configuration for intelligence scatterers. So what I'm talking about now is something that we call the intelligence configuration for ArcGIS Pro. ICAP is an ArcGIS Pro managed configuration. It leverages the power of the SDK and ArcGIS Pro to have a customized user interface for the intelligence analyst. It provides additional capabilities for intelligence gathering and supports disconnected low bandwidth and intermittent connectivity. And it is designed specifically for the non-GIS professional. So what is some of this new functionality? Well, it allows you to do batch import and import StyleX files. Uh, an all-source analyst may not have the luxury of having the same source, so they want to just get everything in one folder in, into the GIS. That batch import allows for that. Also, it allows you to understand and receive alerts when can, certain conditions are met. So if new information is being put into a folder, you want to be aware of that. Uh, it can, you can configure those notifications. Also, link charting is available, which allows you a new way to visualize and edit your data in ArcGIS and make connections that you may otherwise not have been able to make. It also provides a custom start experience. So while you can run ICAP and ArcGIS Pro side by side, the ICAP provides a more custom experience. It has a different splash screen, a different start screen, and it also has four different templates available for you. And these contain distinct maps, scenes, and styles, as well as feature templates and tasks for each domain. And also provides you a graphical representation of your recent projects. It also refines the user experience by having the ribbon interface more focused. So uh, ArcGIS Pro provides a lot of capability, but that capability may not be needed by, the, by a typical intelligence analyst. So what we've done is pared down to the most commonly used tools and also customize the tool galleries and embed the military tools for ArcGIS. Also, we've compiled many different task lists for common and repeatable work workflows. All right, so that's enough about me talking about this. Let's see the ICAP configuration. So you'll see on my desktop here, I have regular ArcGIS Pro and I have ICAP. And so we have the, the new splash screen with the four different templates as well as the carousel right here. Let's open an all source project and see what the ICAT configuration looks like. So as the ICAP configuration opens, the, the pro project is doing several things. It's creating a database, it's acquiring the toolboxes, and also finding all and creating all the web layers that are needed for this type of analysis. So you don't have to do all of that on your own. It's already created for you. You'll see that a lot of the tabs are similar, but the options inside them have been pared down to the most commonly used tasks. So you saw an insert was a, a huge variety of things uh, in ArcGIS Pro regular. Uh, in the IK configuration, it's the most commonly used task here. I also want to point out that the same thing is available for analysis. So the tool gallery is much smaller, more streamlined, and more capable. Also, we've added new capabilities such as distance and direction and visibility right in there. And creating charts and raster functions are now available. Same with editing. We have, using the IK configuration, you're able to use the military symbol editor. 
And also the more common uh, intelligence gathering tools are here as well, such as moving and replacing geometry. So that's the ICAP configuration. And I'm gonna now pass it over to Wendy to talk a little bit more about defense tools. Thanks, Matt. So there are also a number of ArcGIS solutions for defense built to work specifically for ArcGIS Pro. They include military tools for ArcGIS and military symbology, which further extend the intelligence workstation capabilities. ArcGIS defense solutions are designed to be ready and easy to use, and you can find them at solutions.arcgis.com slash defense. Today you have seen how we can address analyst challenges and provide a simplified production workstation environment. ArcGIS Pro provides a framework that integrates national imagery formats with geospatial data for more robust intelligence products and provides advanced analysis capabilities on data from multiple sources and formats. It's easy to use for non-GIS analysts, operators, and decision makers to view and use geospatial data in the field or strategic command. Analysts can leverage the full ArcGIS platform to discover authoritative enterprise data and services. And it enables visualization and sharing of critical information through the use of integrated apps and customizable tools. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you are interested in learning more about the intelligence configuration for ArcGIS Pro or imagery tools and capabilities, Please join us for the webinars on June 19th and June 28th, respectively. Connect with our defense and intelligence community on GeoNet at community.esri.com under Industries for Defense and Intelligence. Here you can ask technical questions, read customer success stories, view user-created story maps, and find additional information on products or solutions. We also offer a series of regional technical exchange meetings. Some of these offer hands-on exercises and training. Register at go.esri.com slash di-series. With that, I'll turn it back over to Laura to answer a few questions. Thank you so much, Wendy and Matt. We'd now like to give you all the opportunity to get your specific questions answered. Please use the question tabs on your right to type in your questions and we'll answer them here live. So I do have a question already here. Um, perhaps you can speak to it, Matt. Is ArcMap, going, um, for, ArcMap for desktop going away? Yes, so I can definitely answer that question. And to answer it, um, yes, ArcMap is going away but that doesn't mean we're not gonna support it. We're supporting for at least another five years and probably further into the future. All of our new development is going into enhancing and making ArcGIS Pro the most modern desktop GIS we can. So rest assured that we will continue to support ArcMap for a long time, but now is your opportunity to test out Pro and become proficient at it. Perfect, thank you. Another question here, can I use ArcGIS Pro offline or in a disconnected environment? Yes, you absolutely can. So ArcGIS Pro can be configured to download a license and have that license local to your machine. So you can work with ArcGIS Pro and, and all of its tools without using the, the internet. Can well, keep in mind that if you are not connected to the internet, you will not be able to access your portal items. However, those can also be downloaded to your machine. So you can pretty much work anywhere in the world with ArcGIS Pro. Perfect. Another question here. As a member of the DOD, how can I request a copy of ICAP? So that's a very good question. So ICAP, as it currently stands, is in beta testing right now. And it's not available to DOD, on DOD systems. 
It will be available when ArcGIS Pro 2.2 .2 hits the whitelist. If you're interested in testing out ICAP now, you can join the Early Adopters program uh, by searching Esri Early Adopters ICAP on your general search engine. And all that takes is an email, and you'll get a download to um, you'll get a download of, of ICAP, and you can just run it, and it'll install ICAP on your machine, uh, and you can test it out. The only caveat is that you have to provide us feedback, or else we don't know what you don't like, uh, and we don't know what's enhanced. Wonderful. Another question here about imagery tools. It says, what imagery tools are included with ArcGIS Pro, and what's coming? So the general imagery tools that are included with ArcGIS Pro are all made available by the Image Analyst extension. So on the Image Analyst extension, you have several options for raster processing, uh, such as view sheds, slope calculations, um, watershed analysis, and similar functions like that. Also, you have the image classification wizard that allows you to understand land cover from imagery. You're also able to use 3D point clouds and 3D meshes to make realistic scenes. Great, thank you so much, Matt. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you everyone for attending. Please do take a few minutes to complete the survey that will appear when you exit. And be sure to join us for our next webinar where we'll focus specifically on ICAP. Have a great rest of your day, bye.